Hi everybody, welcome to Wake Up Well. It's the 17th of July and we're coming towards the end of a week where we have been thinking about standing up for our faith, uh, particularly around evangelism. Um, and I think I'm going to look at the Apostle Paul today because he really understood um, that persecution for our faith is, a, is something that happens and can happen and, and that whole value of standing up and, and evangelism and, and what comes next if you really stand up for your faith. So I have a question for you before we jump in and it's this. Um, have you ever met anybody who's really survived near death uh, or perhaps a really serious danger of death, uh, you know, in, in one way or another and, and lived to tell a tale? I, I suspect that if that's you or if you know someone like that, they're not particularly bold and brash about it. They don't boast about it. They don't tell that story like, oh, here's the day I escaped the jaws of death. Usually it's much more humble. People will say, yeah, this happened and I'm, I'm simply glad to be alive or, you know, um, there but for the grace of God go I. Certainly that was my experience the time that I was nearly uh, shipwrecked in Southeast Asia and thankfully I've lived to tell the tale. Well, rather than that kind of, um, kind of boasting, uh, Paul is rather like that with his life as well. I want to read you the description that Paul the Apostle gives of his life and what happened to him sometimes because of following Jesus. So we're in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24. It says this, five different times the Jewish leaders gave me 39 lashes with a whip. Three times I was beaten with rods, once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked, once I spent a whole night and a day adrift at sea. I have traveled on many long journeys. I have faced danger from rivers and from robbers. I have faced danger from my own people, the Jews, as well as from the Gentiles. I have faced danger in the cities, in the deserts and on the seas. I have faced danger from men who claim to be believers, but are not. I have worked hard and long, enduring many sleepless nights. I have been hungry and thirsty and I have often gone without food. I have shivered in the cold without enough clothing to keep warm. And then he says, besides all of this, I carry the burden of the churches that I've planted and the people that I love around the patch. So he says this, if I must boast, I, um, I would rather boast about the things that show how weak I am. If I must boast, I would rather boast about the things that show how weak I am. Interesting approach, isn't it? But Paul also is really happy to boast about the reason for his faith. So he says, you know, I'm also absolutely passionate and in love with Jesus who revealed himself to me. I know that there's a father in the heavens who loves me. I, I, I am in touch and I receive my inspiration, my help, my comfort from Holy Spirit. So he's, he's happy to boast about that as well. He's really, really heavily motivated to live the kind of life that results in this, this story of what's happened to him. Obviously, he saw successes in, and he was received well in other places as well. And I wonder what it will take for you and for me to be able to say the same kind of thing and the same kind of attitude that Paul has. And I wonder why you and I wouldn't be like that right now. It's worth thinking about, isn't it? Let's put it another way. Paul puts it really simply elsewhere in, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12. He says this. Everyone... Who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Wow, simple as that. Everyone who really tries to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution one way or another. But this is what he says is really important. But, but you must remain faithful, verse 14, to the things that you've been taught. You must remain faithful to what you already know of God. You know they are true, for you know that you can trust those who taught you. You've been taught by the Holy Scriptures since childhood, and they've given you the wisdom to receive the salvation that comes by trusting in Christ. So he says, stay true to what you already know. You and I already know that Jesus is real, that he loves us. It's, we found it in scriptures. We found it in our everyday life. Stay true to what we know that God's love is, is real and it's powerful and it's mighty. Stay true to the fact that we've seen our lives and the lives of others transformed. It's not just changes around the edges. Jesus transforms lives. Stay true to the fact that we know nothing is impossible with God, e even in the waiting and the praying. 
and the wandering. Stay true. Why? Well, verse 15, he, he kind of sum, summarises it. He says, you've been given the wisdom. This, this kind of truth that you hear of and the scriptures, they are the wisdom to receive that kind of salvation that comes by trusting in Christ Jesus. Salvation means being saved from something and for something into wholeness of life. Paul was saved many times, even though he was beaten and shipwrecked many times, because he trusted, because he had this foundation upon which his life was, was, was resting. And so in the light of all of this, in the light of this picture of why you and I would persevere and push on and keep true to that which we believe in and have been revealed to us about God, for the sake of passing on his message, Paul says this, it's, it's serious stuff this, he says in chapter 4 of 2 Timothy, I solemnly urge you and me in the presence of God and Christ Jesus, who will someday judge the living and the dead when he comes to set up his kingdom. I urge you, preach the word. Preach the word of God. Be prepared whether the time is favourable or not. Patiently correct, rebuke and encourage your people with good teaching. Because the time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching, rather like today. They will follow their own desires and they will look to teachers who just tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. They will reject the truth and chase after myths. It's absolutely what happens today. So Paul says this, but you should keep a clear mind in every situation. Don't be afraid of suffering for the Lord. Work at telling others the good news and fully carry out the ministry that God has given you. Don't be afraid of suffering. It, it happens to those who also aren't afraid of the whole package of what it is to be a follower of Jesus and one who wants to um, fully carry out the ministry that God has given us. So today, let us stand up and speak up in the places that we were brought up. Let's do it. Let us tell others the good news with clear heads and a, a clear conscience. Yes, aware of the potential consequences but also aware of the incredible eternal blessing which is ours uh, as we follow Jesus in everyday life. So it's not an easy word to hear today, but we can draw on the encouragement and the experience of someone who really walked it and saw it and at the end of his life ha had seen an incredible uh, birth of, of the church. And so I bless you this day to, to stand and to follow Jesus in all things in, in the everyday.